Hello, everybody. Happy New Year. Um, welcome back to uh, our fun IBA Friday. Um, hi, Sheetal. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Robert? It's never Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so to put you on the spot, Sheetal, um, I've heard just recently that you're learning to play an instrument. <laughs> Is that yes. true? <laughs> That's my new year resolution <laughs> to do something. <laughs> and, and can, tell us what that instrument is, uh, Sheetal. I'm learning to play the ukulele. Awesome. I'm not sure I'm really good at it, but I'm uh, totally okay. okay. <laughs> so, what, what, so what everybody listening to IBA Friday right now and myself will expect in about six months is a theme song, just as Maureen said earlier. Yes, okay? With the ukulele, right? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to beat Jens this yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. Just so everybody knows that's listening right now, I'm going to be in trouble for saying that, but uh it's all good, Cheetah. I'm just uh, I'm just poking at you. So, um, all right, let's get started, shall we? Um, mm -hmm. Today we've got uh, we got something that we want to talk about, um, and it has to do with identity proofing um, users, uh, specifically uh, ones that call help desks. And as a practical example of why we're talking about that, and we've talked about this breach before um, and we don't want to keep dragging you know MGM under the bus here uh, but they had a fairly significant breach as did Caesars um, MGM kind of had more of the spotlight because theirs lasted longer um, but that happened because somebody had called the help desk and there was a vishing that's with a v not phishing but a vishing attempt um, that uh, enabled them to get access to a user's credentials Right. And then whatever they had access to on the back end. So um, I know that you did a little bit of research. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what happened there? And then we can talk about, well, how how can we solve that going forward? So specifically, what kind of happened at the at the end? Just to re re reframe everybody and refresh everybody's memory. What kind of happened there? So with MGM, I think this happened back in October. Right. Yeah. We noticed that um, literally some uh, scattered spider, which is one of these uh, really popular groups, called in um, to a help desk agent. They mm -hmm. had grabbed a critical employee's LinkedIn credentials, used some of the information there, called in a help desk, and had a very persuasive tone of voice and mm -hmm. convincing storyline. Um, spoke with a help desk agent, and they were able to reset their credentials or gain access to their credentials, right? They then actually used these credentials to go ahead gain access to critical systems enough to steal and encrypt all of their data. So mm -hmm. this, this, you know, sort of massively brought them down. And of course, they started demanding for crypto. Mm -hmm. what, what it really meant for MGM was, you know, for days on end, they were stuck with people who were at resorts having no access to the slot machines, not being able to go up and down an elevator. I think mm -hmm. that hits hard, right? And we've mm -hmm. all been those customers in a resort who were mm -hmm. not happy with that kind of customer service, mm -hmm. not happy at slot machines. Yeah. So, you know, it really hurt MGM. It took them literally 10 days to sort of come out and step out of their attack. Yeah. Um, what's surprising was, you know, it was just a simple, it was nothing, it was not a complex attack vector, right? It was a simple social engineering hack. Pick up LinkedIn credentials, call a help desk, and get them reset. Yeah. Uh, so that so that's really how that entire 10 days of pain was inflicted upon a, a casino as large as MGM. Yeah. Yeah. And as and as net result, I got a letter in the mail probably mm -hmm. just before the holidays saying, Hey, I know you've stayed at our hotels before and your data might have been compromised. So here's a free credit check for the year. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, outside of all the uh, lost revenue, you know, there's there's this spend that they had to go through just to try to uh, reassure um, customers that, you know, um, their data is safe or if it isn't that they'll be able to keep track of it. So um, you and I were on a call recently with a Gartner analyst. Um, they had commented that um, they're receiving a lot of calls a week mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. around how to prevent these types of attacks because they are on the rise. And mm -hmm. just like we said, you know, back when this happened that, you know, copycats, when they see something they're like, oh, okay, if that's an easy way to do it, then that's what we're going to do. So there's this, there's been a significant increase in these types of attacks. Uh, Gartner analysts are seeing it from, you know, what customers are asking for. 
Um, and being that, you know, one cosmos is really good at, you know, um, uh, doing identity proofing and password lists and being able to combine all that stuff together. Um, let's chat about what we could do to help a help desk agent or an organization that has help desks mm -hmm. um, be able to prove who the user is that's calling. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Let's let's chat a little bit about that. How would we or how could an organization do that? Mm -hmm. Typically in the past, you know, Robert, what we were doing was, you know, every time a password reset need to happen, we always used to um, do it through a device, a biometric enabled device where mm -hmm. you're able to verify somebody's face ID, live ID before you do it. But what happens in a scenario like a casino or a large retail center, right? These are all field employees who are on a casino floor or at, um, at, at, at a store, right? So they're not corporate employees who are in front of a desk or mm -hmm. having access to their phone. So what do you do to support these kind of scenarios? So which is when we started thinking about why identity? Identity is probably the answer to doing this. Why yeah. don't we verify users' identity before actually allowing them to do a password reset? Mm -hmm. Right. So I think in the last few months with with a lot of requests and conversations with customers in this category of having uh, a lot of field staff we found that having your help desk agents put the end user or the employee through a identity verification on the fly. So we're able to verify before we actually do an identity, uh, before we do a credential reset is probably the best way to go about it. And um, with one of our customers, we're about to do the exact same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, organizations want to try to, you know, mitigate, you know, any sort of, you know, fraud into the call center, which is exactly what this is, right? Um, but they also want to make sure that they can shorten, you know, the average handle time for to verify a caller, right? And typically what I believe, or I mean, listen, I've called in a help desk, you've called into a help desk to reset passwords. They're, they're going to ask you some questions, right? Mm -hmm. What's your mother's maiden name? Um, you know, um, how long have you worked here? I, there's a bunch of knowledge-based questions and that's where the vishing came from, right? Mm -hmm. So trying to prove identity through that is, is not an efficient way, or it's okay. not a, uh, and uh, it's not a good way to prove the legitimacy of the caller. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I think you're going to show us how we could try to prove that legitimacy uh, of the caller um, and, and do it with a very high level of assurance, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. So we're going to jump into the demo just yeah. to make it exciting for you quickly. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share. I think it's already exciting, Sheetal. I don't think this is <laughs> I don't think it's possible to make it more exciting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, done. Um, so you know, what we're about to see is a video of, you know, um, how one of our customers uses credential reset um, through our, our ID proofing solution, right? So we're actually going to start off with what happens with a help desk administrator, and then we're going to proceed into what's happening with the actual employee or the person who's trying to reset their credential. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and um, show you this video. And here, what you see is uh, this is the help desk agent who's trying to log into a portal um, where he can actually trigger the request for a password re reset, right? So the help desk admin receives a phone call. Um, he's logging into his own uh, portal. Um, and once he logs in, he's able to, he's presented with a screen where he's able to send a verification link to the end user, to the employee, right? Saying that, hey, verify your identity and then I will help you reset um, your, your password. Okay, so, uh, so, so I'm, I, I'm, I'm the person looking to reset the help desk, or sorry, reset the, the password. You're the help desk agent. I call you. And you're like, give me your phone number. You're mm -hmm. going to put in my phone number there and then hit send. Yep. That's okay. it. So Very I'm good. going to hit send. And then, um, as you can see, we've created a new session for this person. Uh, okay. So what we're going to do, and this is a live session where, you know, it, it's going to be active for a couple of hours. Uh, so the user is going to start, receive the SMS. And this is Robert on the right, who's received the SMS. Uh, he's going to click the link on it and he's going to begin his ID verification process. It's fairly quick to initiate the process and go through it end to end. Um, they go through a consent screen where, you know, we sort of display the privacy notice of the mm -hmm. company. Um, then we proceed to opening up the camera. 
And here what's happening is uh, Robert's being asked to uh, scan the front side of his driver's license. And it could be any document, right? It can be a driver's license, a passport, um, any government issued ID where we have the front and back. Um, and followed by um, once the scan is complete, we're just showing you a quick preview of the front and back of the document that was captured. And then uh, we're also asking the employee to provide a selfie, right? Um, and at the end of it, you will see that the ID verification has been completed, right? So there, Robert sort of finished his identity verification, right? And we I got better looking in that video too, which is good. That doesn't happen often. <laughs> yeah, you <it> did. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so once that's done, right? So now what did the user provide? The user provided the front of their image, the back of their image, and then a selfie. So this is what we had. Um, so now the help desk admin is gonna go ahead and check that session um, right over here. And he's gonna check whether the user completed verification. And as you can see here, uh, he's able to use the same session ID and look up whether uh, Prasanna actually finished his ID verification. And um, he did. And the document that was presented was a driver's license and verification passed. Right. Um, now, why is this, you know, can you, the big thing is, you know, all of this, all of these little scores that we have here is really what helps us make sure that it was a real document. If, mm -hmm. if you know, Robert had presented a photocopy document, we would have caught that. Like, you know, we, we, we wouldn't pass a photocopy document. We wouldn't pass a document where, you know, it's it's a document that's been grabbed off of the internet, um, or even if uh, the face doesn't match on both the IDs. So these are all like checks and balances that are in place to make sure that the ID that's being presented is a strong identity to begin with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. So, I mean, the other, the other interesting there, uh, as well as that it didn't take very long time to finish was 44 seconds, mm -hmm. right? So seconds. that's pretty quick for that level of assurance that that user is not fraudulent, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, okay, we, we captured all that. There's no there's no PII data on display here, from what I can tell, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Right? So 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 the the from a help desk agent standpoint, they're not looking at anything um, that they shouldn't have access to, which is cool. Where does the PII data go that was just captured? by myself, also known as persona. Mm -hmm. So the, you know, Robert, we always say this, you know, we are, we believe in being a privacy preserving company, right? So for any customer who's in production, we ensure that their data stays transient. Mm -hmm. Meaning the data is available only until the time that the verification is completed. After that, it just disappears, right? We purge that data, yeah. just to make sure that we're a data processor. So we make sure that the data is handled appropriately. It's discarded as soon as the verification is handled. Now, on the other hand, if there are customers who need to keep the data, we also support that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, being in the business of, of ensuring uh, that the right people have the right access to data, I think a help desk admin just needs to see just about this much information, yeah. right? To know that who scanned their document and then just go through it. So we're able to give them roles and permissions that get them to this point, right? So that's that's the beauty of it. Well, that's amazing. Um, so obviously in doing this, uh, for people that have been along for all of our IBA Fridays, um, we scan the document, we do the OCR scan on that. We then you know verify if, if the document looks real. We take the picture, we compare the picture to the selfie. Those All those things look legitimate. They pass all those good things. Then that's why we got all the green check marks. Mm -hmm. that's, right. that's right. And then if any one of those were red, then obviously that's a flag to the um, to the help desk agent, especially if it if it failed, uh, that you would then have to shut that call down and maybe, you know, go talk to somebody about somebody trying to do some phishing attacks. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very cool. Easy enough. Um, so, you know, when we when we look at this um, and 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 we we see um, what's going on in the market. Um, even even here at One Cosmos, we've had a number of calls uh, from customers asking, "Can you solve this problem?" Right. Um, so you know, what do you what do you kind of see? You have a crystal ball, future looking. Um, you know, when when you look at where this 
has the potential of going. Um, tell us a little bit about your thoughts on, you know, how this could be, you know, integrated, quick, simple, like, how does this work? If somebody wants to stand this up and deploy it, is it, is it a six month lift to make this work? Or can you have this up and running in a couple of days? So it's actually quick and simple, right? Um, of course it is. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> <It's not bad. laughs> but um, uh, for some of our customers, we are able to support this completely through APIs, right? So if they needed to do this within their own environment, we are able to totally support that. Um, yeah. And it's just a quick integration of the API where it generates a session to do ID verification, and then it returns a verification result. So you as the customer can decide to use it in any kind of use case that you, you see it fit. But also for other customers who don't have the infrastructure to stand this up, we're able to offer a portal that can help you generate this entire interaction, right? Yeah. You set on our portal, you set up help desk admins who can generate the session, who can view the session. So it can go either ways, um, but but quick and easy it is. Interesting. Okay, so one one last question before before we wrap up. So you showed what that app kind of looked like. Um, it looked like it it was very one Cosmosy. Um, I'm MGM. Right. I've got a mm -hmm. brand I've got to maintain. Um, you know, I'm, you know, uh, Caesars. I have a brand I want to maintain. Um, can can I change the look and feel of that to make sure that um, when when I send it to maybe a customer or even mm -hmm. an employee um, that they still feel like they're dealing with the same? Company? Absolutely. So I think every time a customer is goes, going through an IT verification journey, these are all templates that are behind the scenes. So we offer the ability to sort of customize it so that it looks exactly and represents the brand, right? Mm -hmm. So if it's a casino, a retail center, we're able to exactly uh, show the exact branding of that organization. So it's a very seamless experience for anyone who is coming on board. Yeah. So, you know, we can be behind the scenes and just let the uh, let the identity verification template show, show the brand. That's awesome. Um, that was... It was actually that video was very exciting. She I, I take it back. It did it did make it better. Um, I do I do appreciate you uh, doing that. So okay, everybody, uh, that's uh, that's it for today's IBA Friday. Hopefully um, you got something out of that. Um, you know, if you do have a help desk and you are potentially struggling with um, being able to um, ensure the validity of the person on the other end of that uh, call, and you want to make sure before you reset any passwords that. Uh, you prove that the use that the caller calling is legitimate. Um, this is a quick and easy way that you can do that um, with very little friction uh, added in, and you can be assured that when you do reset that password, it's for um, somebody that is actually requesting it. So until next time, Sheetal, thanks again. Um, enjoy the rest of uh, your Friday, and uh, we'll see you on our next IBA Friday. Thanks for coming, everybody. Talk to you again soon. Thank you.